Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and almost died from a drug overdose. Something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. Now, years later, my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. So come on and join me on the road to freedom. to On the Road to Freedom. You've joined us in beautiful, gorgeous day in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And we're right here on Lake Hamilton. And what's so fun is you're going to see boats going by. Wow. You may see wave runners, people on kayaks. It's going to be a great view behind us today. We're so thankful you've joined us. This is always an honor and a privilege for us to encourage you in yeah. the Word. Amen. Would you please let your friends and family know about On the Road to Freedom? We'd love the opportunity to be a blessing to them too. And also, how can we pray for you? Because this show is for you. We are here for you and we want to join our faith with you. So if you need prayer or have a specific request, please reach out to us by email through prayer at mylan.org. And of course, as you know, the reason why we do this show is because, and well, you may not, maybe this is your first time watching the show. That's right. For those of you who have watched us uh, before, you know what we're about to say. King Jesus said in John 8, 31 and 32, if you will continue Amen. in my word, that is the purpose for this show, that we would all continue in the word, then we truly are his disciples mm. and we will know the truth. That's the great oh, reward. Thank you, we'll God. know the truth. Thank you, God. Praise God. When you the seek, truth. you will find. That's mm. God's promise to you. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. So we believe today that we're all on that road to freedom and we're getting freer every day. Hallelujah. Amen. So thank you for joining us. And today we're talking about an awesome subject. We've titled this show, This Is War. Amen. <laughs> and how, do me, how many of you know we're in a war? And we're going to discuss that with you today. Recently, you know, we've had one evil attack after another emergency after another. Amen. And we realized that in the midst of that, we were resisting di discouragement from those constant trials and, and, and not opposition. not just us personally. I mean, America's had one after another. Right. I, I mean, mean, if you world, watch the news, oh it's, uh, yeah, it's all around us. And that can have the same effect where you realize you're having to resist discouragement and resist oppression, right? And resist the devil. Right. Amen. And, but I have to remind you, but God, we serve Hallelujah. the greater one. Come on, Hallelujah. Baby. And immediately how the Holy Spirit encouraged us is that we needed to stay in the fight. Yeah. Because now what do I mean by that? Because this is a faith fight. So we needed to stay in a place of faith because this, what we're fighting, this is worth fighting for. Now, what am I talking about? What is this? Well, it's God's promise manifested for you for whatever you need. If it's healing or deliverance, restoration or prosperity, this is worth fighting for. So we need to stay in the fight. That's a mental attitude where we stay in a place of faith. We are in a war, people. It's a spiritual war, though. I just want to remind you, our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God. Yeah. Our weapons, Amen. we don't fight war like the world fight, like, you know, Vietnam or Korea or the Second World War. Yeah. or the one that's coming, the Third World War. Mm. We don't fight. We're Christians. We would not have been given armor if we were not in a battle. Right. If we didn't need to prepare that's right. for the possibility of war. Ephesians 6 and 11 instructs us to put on the whole armor of God. That you Notice not the whole armor of the world, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yeah. God's enemy is your enemy. Let me give you an example. When I joined the Army, I was 17 years old. I was what they called a gung-ho 
uh, kid. I mean, I joined. If you didn't join, you got drafted in those days anyway. So I knew it was just a matter of time. So I went ahead and joined as soon as I got out of high school. And I went in, and man, I wanted to be the best soldier. I was not going to be there. I didn't want to be career guy. They were going to shave my head, and I thought, personally, I thought that was rude, and I wanted to get it over with. I wanted to have a lot of hair. I knew I was going to be in a band, <laughs> and I knew what kind of music I wanted to make and what style I wanted to have and everything. So I joined up to get those things done. And, you know, my brother had joined, my dad, my uncle, uh, and so I joined. If you joined, you got to choose which uh, type of service you volunteer, you got into. So I wanted to be a military police like my brother was. I was eager to learn about how to win the war, the possibility. The poster said, join the Army and be a man. When you're 17, <laughs> especially me, I was a little guy. I grew late. When I got out of high school and went in the Army, they have what they call a 201 file that tells you everything about yourself. Mine said that I was five feet, four inches tall and weighed, uh, I think I weighed 119 pounds. Now, that's a little guy. I grew, and I'm now 6'2", and about 220. So you can tell that I grew later on, you know, mm -hmm. twice the man I used to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I was eager to learn how to be a good soldier. When we were being taught vital uh, principles that would keep us in alive in the battle. There were several in my class who I, I would be sitting in classes, you know, every day they took you to a different class. And in some instances, I'd look around and there would be people sleeping in class. Sergeants, of, these sergeants, these guys that taught us, they were yeah. tough guys. Mm -hmm. And man, you'd look at these guys and they're screaming, they're hollering at us and they're showing us. I remember one time, we were in a place, baby, where they threw, uh, they were teaching you how to th throw a hand grenade. Mm -hmm. And this is a live hand grenade, right? <laughs> You're sitting in class, they go through it all with you, they explain it to you, and you go up one at a time, and you throw this hand grenade over this bear, and there's an old tank, it's probably 30 years old, and people have been throwing hand grenades at it every day for 30 years, it's all blown all to pieces. Uh, but what's left of it, you gotta get it over this barrier, you can see the tank and everything, but you gotta throw it a certain way. Now, if you're not paying attention and you don't throw it right, if it hits the barricade, it comes back wow. in, it's live. This yeah. is a live, you've already pulled the pin. This is a live <laughs> hanging in. Now, there's a big pit mm -hmm. and it will roll down in there and go underground and blow up. If, it, if everything works right, that'll save your life. But if it doesn't, there have been instances a few times when people didn't get out in time and, and that thing rolled down and blew them up and killed mm. them. And yet we had people sleeping in class. Yeah. Now listen, if you're just getting ready, some people join the army, it's like, okay, it'll be my, my career. I'll be a, an IT guy or I'll be a pilot or I'll be whatever. They made me a clerk typist. I became the general, I'm, I became the colonel's <laughs> orderly, which was a good job. It was a blessing. I got to drive his Jeep every morning and get it clean and all kind of stuff. But man, I had to type morning reports every day. Well, now, I did not join the army to learn how to type. <laughs> I joined the army to learn what to do in battle. Yeah. Do you understand? We, in, we, we go to church or we read the Bible every day. We're not reading the Bible to find out what to do on Easter Sunday, how to dress when we go to church. We're reading the Bible to learn what to do when the devil attacks you and your family yeah. and all hell breaks loose and you're waking up in the middle of the night sweating and, and, and being tempted to fear because somebody you love is dying. Mm. And you gotta decide and you gotta find out, do I know how to do battle? Do I know how to win this war, mm. this spiritual war where this enemy called Satan that I've never actually seen, but I've seen his work and I've seen what he can accomplish. And boy, we need to learn how to have this victory yeah. that overcomes the world, Amen. even our, our faith. faith. So, you know, I don't want to be in the trenches with somebody who doesn't know. There's no use to ask somebody to pray for you that doesn't know how to pray for themselves. If they don't understand spiritual warfare and they don't put their whole armor on, their prayers are not going to be answered. Their prayers are not going to be effective. They're just going to end up with religion and no power. Mm -hmm. Please get this. 
we study the word so we know what to do and how mm -hmm. to win the battle. We fight the good fight. Mm -hmm. The good fight. What can make a fight a good fight? The one you win. That's the good <laughs> fight. We're commanded in 1 Timothy 6 and 12 to fight the good fight of faith. There is a fight to fight. Yeah. It's not a, 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 the, according to the Lord. The, we know that the battle is the Lord's. 1 Samuel tells us that. But we do have a part. We have a part to keep believing in the middle of the battle. That's right. So what I want to go over with you quickly, if you're taking notes, I would write at the top, War Time Instructions. Come on, <laughs> War That's Time good. Instructions. I and like number that. one, we are in a spiritual war. It's important that you understand our battle is not against people. That's right. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according mm. to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God or against the Word of God. And we are to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Mm. So our first wartime instruction, number one, we're in a spiritual war. Number two, we are to cast down every thought that disagrees with the Word. That's good. Buddy. Now, the reason why this is important is because thoughts become words that will affect whether we win or lose. Mm. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 31, take no thought saying. So once we speak fear, we've taken that thought. But when, so when fear attacks our mind, here should be our response. We should, our battle cry in that situation should be faith. We believe and we speak God's word. That's good. Amen. That's a weapon of our warfare. Amen. My darling, when you, when you said just then, we do not war according to the flesh. Right. This is a spiritual war. Yeah. The thing that people, people always seem to think that other people. Oh, I remember yeah. when I was yeah. a kid, mm -hmm. it was the, uh, you know, when my dad was in the Second World War and I was just a little baby, I remember it was the Germans and the Japanese, yeah. they were the problem. Right. And then later on, it was the Russians and they were the problem. And now maybe the Vietnamese or the, um, you know, Afghanis or the, it's always North Koreans. You know what I mean? Who's the bad guy now? To some people, it's the black guy. To some people, it's the white guy or the white girl. I mean, the devil is constantly trying to divide us Our political and trying parties. to make us, yeah, yeah, trying to make mm -hmm. us fight each other. Right, right. But we're not doing battle Amen. against flesh Amen. and blood. Yeah. People are not the problem. Yeah. Is there a problem with somebody in China that trying might have released a, a a, a virus that would affect a lot of people. It's possible that there's an evil person in China, of course, but there's plenty of evil people in America. Mm -hmm. And there, and there, and some of them go to church. And praise <laughs> God, that's a good idea because they will get changed if they stay there long enough. Yeah. God's power is released through our words. When we put His word in our mouths, that's when we honor Him by saying His word's the truth and his way is the way. Proverbs 18, 21 says it this way, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Now we must keep our words in agreement with God's word. Matthew 4 and verse 1 through 10, Jesus defeated the devil mm -hmm. in every temptation when he said, it is written. Hallelujah. And we got to refuse to draw back in fear if we're going to do this because the devil will try to tempt us to fear while, even while we're using God's word in our mouth. Yeah. Hebrews 10, 39 says, but we're not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise Second God. Chronicles 20, 21 and 2 says, but when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of God's holiness as they went out with the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now, when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. 
who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Three armies had mm-hmm. come against Judah's little army. Yeah. Any one of those three armies were much, much bigger than Judah. And yet, when they didn't know what to do, the the uh, king of Judah set ambush. He, he, he set out praisers. He didn't get an army ready. He sent out people to praise and worship <laughs> God. Yeah. And God sent ambushments against them, and they fought among themselves. When the Israelites began to praise and worship God, the Lord sent the ambushments, and their enemy was completely destroyed. Yeah. Judah walked in and took all the spoils mm-hmm. of war. Those three armies had been going around the country, uh, taking over, killing everybody and stealing all the good stuff, all the gold, all the silver, all the wonderful things. They not only didn't die that day, they came back from that camp wealthy, blessed to be a blessing. I want to talk to you for just a minute about the benefits of partnership. We call it Team Milan. And there are benefits. And by the way, you who are already a part of Team Mom, I am so thankful for you. And that is a divine appointment. I, I know that God put us together. That's right. And He has a purpose and a plan. And it's perfect. In our hearts, you're holy ground. Amen. That's the bottom line. We pray for you every day. The Word says, if two of you agree touching anything on earth, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Praise God. We also yeah. send a monthly love letter. Mm-hmm. Every month you'll be the first to hear what the Lord's talking to us about and what He's leading us in, what we're learning, and and we are constantly. We continue in the Word. That Mm -hmm. is a part of who we are and what we do. Amen. And also the anointing and the grace of God on our lives comes upon you. Just as Paul wrote to his partners in Philippians 1, 7, he said, you are all partakers with me of the grace of God. So you become a partaker of the grace of God upon our lives. Also, we're a tithing ministry. So your seed is twice sown seed. 10% of every gift that we receive is sown into other ministries and outreaches around the world that enable us to reach even more people with your gift. And then the last one we want to encourage you in is you receive the same reward. When you receive us as a gift from God, you will reap rewards in this life and in the one to come. For every life this ministry reaches with the love of God, you receive again the same reward. Matthew 10 41 says, He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. That's right. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Amen. So praise God as we stand together in faith during unprecedented times, we make the commitment to you that we will never draw back. If you would like to join us in the ministry and help us tell the world how good God is and how much He loves them, then you just go to mylan.org and click on Team Mylan, and it's a great honor and a great privilege for us to join our faith with Amen. yours for yes. all of your dreams to come true. Yes. again about this is war and we're giving you wartime instructions. I want to review. We're in a spiritual war. Number two, cast down every thought. Number three, God's power is released through our words. Number four, refuse to draw back, which Mylon talked about. Number five, and take the time to praise the Lord. And Mm. this is the sixth one. We want to encourage you in wartime to pray in the Spirit Mm. more than ever. Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Mm. And so I can tell you over and over again, we've been in situations where we did not know what to do. That's right. And as we prayed in the Spirit, the Lord gave us understanding and insight and the knowing. 
and he made a way where there Many seemed to times. be no way. Oh, Amen. Lord. Over and over again. So in the other instruction we have in wartime is we need to keep sowing. We don't need to draw back in our giving. Nope. We actually need to press in even uh, more fervently where sowing is concerned, especially if you're in a battle with your finances right now. Jehovah Jireh, our provider, our commander, here's mm -hmm. what he commanded us. In Luke 6, 38, he commanded us to give. And it will be, not maybe, it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, that's abundance, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be yes. measured back to you. Now, what's amazing is you determine the measure of your harvest. That's right. If you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly, the word says, but if you'll sow generously, especially in a battle, if you'll sow generously by faith, you mm -hmm. will reap generously. Just Amen. be obedient to give whatever amount, that number that God gives you. The tithes is 10%. It's the first 10% of your increase. Then anything above that is your offering. Yeah. And so Mylon and I want you to know that we give um, of the tithes and offerings personally, but also the ministry. Mylon Lefebvre yeah. Ministries gives the tithe and offerings also. So this is a sowing ministry. We are a sowing uh, marriage and we have reaped abundance. I can tell you that it took time. It was line upon line, precept upon precept. We did, God did deliver us from debt. And now we are, it was increase uh, little by little, right? And, and let me let me add to that, please, okay. my love. Don't you feel guilty. Don't you let somebody else feel guilty for you being blessed. If you've been tithing for a long time and you've been sowing and giving, and confessing over your seed and believing God, and God supernaturally blesses you, you keep doing that. Don't be concerned about what others think. I don't care what others think. Yeah. The more that God gives me, the more that I can give, the more that I can sow into the kingdom of God. We have this TV show. I want to be able to tell hundreds of millions of people about the TV show that right. don't even know we're having a TV show. Right. But that means advertising and that's expensive. But there are ways to use the Word of God and there's ways to use the, the finances that God's Word tells us how to receive. So I just want to encourage you that have already understood this. I know that there's some persecution comes because people accuse me of all kind of stuff. But I'm, I've decided a long time ago, I don't care what they think. I know, I know how many times I remember the first time I brought the tithe. <laughs> it was seventeen dollars and fifty cents. Yeah. I was making one hundred and seventy-five dollars a week the first time I brought the tithe, and that was a big deal to me. That seventeen fifty was a whole lot more than when God tells me now to, to send a big check. But praise God, man! I just want to encourage you: keep sowing and keep going wherever God's got you going. Do it for Jesus. And you Amen. know, abundance. I just want to clarify too: abundance just means more than enough. And yeah. God's will for you, the reason why He wants to bless you, you are blessed to be a blessing. Amen, so baby. when you have abundance, that means you can be a bigger blessing. That's right. So that's always our goal every year. Yes, isn't it? It is. Amen. To be a big, bigger blessing this year than we were last year to Amen. the body of Christ. So I want to encourage you, Team Mylan, out there watching today, get excited because your giving is helping us to share this message with people all over the world that Amen. they can win in life. They can win the war. They can win the battle they're in. They can fight the fight of faith and see a glorious victory come out of that battle. So thank you for your faithfulness. And Amen. we want you to know, I've already mentioned this to you, but we're not telling you to do anything that hasn't been required of us. Yes. Everything we're sharing with you today, these are That's the right, wartime baby. instructions that God has given us that we are practicing every day. And as we've practiced them, can't you testify we're seeing victory now on every side? Yes. Amen. Exactly. I mean miracles. We we will I'm I'm so looking miracles. forward to being able to tell you more information about the movie that they're doing about my life right now. Exciting things are happening with our transportation. I just can't wait to tell you it all, but 
have there been war? Has there been warfare? Without a doubt, mm -hmm. it has been. Uh, you know, here's the deal, people. If you're in a boxing match and you get knocked down, you either lay there and it's over, right. or you get up, or you get up, and you get yeah. back in get the back fight, up. yeah, and you go until you win. Yeah, I want. Yeah. I, I want you to say this with me. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says this. Say it with me. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Who gives me the victory. Who gives me the victory. Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. My Lord. My Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. According to Thank 1 John 5 and 4, for whoever is born of God, if you're born again, that's you. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, it's real simple. All you got to say is, Jesus, I believe Amen. you're the son of God. I believe God raised you from the dead. And I accept you and receive you as my Lord and Master. If you believe that and you say that, all you got to do is tell somebody. As soon as you confess it to others, mm -hmm. and we'd love to be yeah. the ones you tell. Yeah. Just go to myland.org. Yeah. Check us That's out. Right. Praise yeah. God. Let us pray with you and, and rejoice with you. And, and when you get born again, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Whatever is born of God, that's you. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our, our faith. faith. The faith that caused you to make that decision for Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, it'll overcome the world. I love it every time I read this, this sentence. When we stay in faith, victory is guaranteed. Amen. When you're tempted to be discouraged and, and uh, or depressed or you're in a battle and you're by yourself and don't have anybody to pray with, uh, I'd encourage you to go to myland.org, watch On the Road to Freedom. They're on demand there. You can watch anything you want to. You just pick up if you want something on health. You just go down through there and read the script, read mm -hmm. the titles. Yeah. It'll tell you what the show's about. We got 150 of them, people. There's mm -hmm. plenty of God's Word for you about anything and everything yeah. in beautiful places all over the world. Amen. You can listen to our podcast over and over. They're free. Yeah. You can watch uh, our our little daily devotional, two or three, five minutes uh, yeah. on a daily scripture that will explain it to you and pray with you. You can call us. You can email us. We'll pray with you. You give us your prayer request. That's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. We just, this is your show. Mm -hmm. We love you. God loves you. And he wants to prove it. And he will if you give him a chance. Uh, our special product today is called Freedom from Fear. Yeah. I would encourage you to get that so you know how to stay in faith and never be in fear again. It's in CD and MP3 format, That's available right. at myland.org. And all That's these right. resources will keep you in the Word. Yeah. And of course, keeping you in the Word will keep you on, on the, the road, road to freedom. freedom.